you're a doctor and so you are seeing patients and um, no doubt have a lot of compassion and love for your patients. Some of the anecdotal stories of people adopting these animal-based low-carbohydrate diets, um, I mean, it leaves me empathizing with, with them because they report having some type of autoimmune condition or inflammatory condition with debilitating symptoms and then feeling significantly better. How do, how do we kind of reconcile that? And if you had someone in front of you that was going through that and was explaining to you the benefits that they have experienced from eliminating plant foods, all of the foods that, that you're advocating for, um, but is open-minded and, and is also considering their long-term health, how would you have that conversation? I think, well, it, it leads to two different thoughts here. One is that some people don't thrive on a plant-based diet, and the question is why. And whatever their genetics or individual needs are, we try to ascertain what those needs are and meet them. And even if it's necessary for some people to eat some animal products, then I would do so to benefit their, their long-term outcome or their outcome for them and not hold to a philosophical viewpoint of what's better for me or somebody else. I'd still want to do what's best for them if they have that need, number one. Um, but we would try to... Um, utilize as little of the animal product as possible as they need to get enough of certain thing that they may require, which is usually slow the digestive process down and get more zinc and you know whatever the, re the things they're getting more iron, whatever thing they, they need. Um, some people are like like um, you know hypomethylators or something or whatever. So we they might not thrive on a totally plant based diet. And I'd still say there's so many beneficial factors in the plant foods that are important for human immune system and longevity we'd still try to incorporate as much plant food as possible and as little animal product as possible to have them thrive. Now you have a person that's the other direction where they seem to thrive better almost all animal products when they take all the plants out. And then the question is, well, what was there in the plant foods that were causing an excitation of their immune system? Because it probably wasn't everything, they were, every plant food they were eating. It was probably certain things they were sensitive to. So then the question would be to how to determine what foods they can eat from the plant kingdom that would be safe for them and still maintain the benefits and then to see if we can improve their digestive health and their gut health so they can tolerate more and more of these foods. And even allergies, we have even let people recover from allergies over time. And we sometimes use oral tolerance therapy once they're eating healthy for a long enough period of time. But we can't even use oral tolerance to improve their allergies until they're able to sustain a, a, a high exposure, like you're saying, to polyphenols and antioxidants for a long period of time to improve immune function, that now we can use to have them be, become less allergic or, or sensitive to certain foods. So one, we're gonna look at what nutritional deficiencies and what individual variabilities they have that make them different from, from a person that doesn't have some of this genetic feature. And, and also what are the particular animal products that might be tr um, sensitized and uh, handling and digesting well and try to design a diet that's best for them without excluding throwing away every good thing that they could be eating that could help their longevity just because they do better when they cut out beans or nuts or some other food like that. So it's complicated, you know, but it's most often, it's, that's not most often the case. Those are very rare instances. It's most often the case that people can make a recovery from their autoimmune condition, conditions eating healthy plant-based diets and they do better off without animal products which create more inflammatory substances in their body. It's more often the other case, but still individuals are different enough that you have to be flexible enough to do what works for a person. What kind of results have you seen with patients that have certain autoimmune conditions who have been able to successfully adopt a nutritarian diet? Yeah, I see predictable um, responses. Psoriasis goes away, lupus, asthma, connective tissue disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, my experience is that it's very rare that I can't have a person recover completely from their autoimmune disease. So much so that I've had multiple individuals who had lupus. One particular teenager had a creatinine of 4.2, which represents significant loss of kidney function. And she was on the national renal transplant list waiting for a new kidney. And by changing her diet, she was able to um, get well again and have her kidney function return to normal, which even shocked me. So I've seen some very, very advanced cases and severe cases of people who've made complete recoveries through excellent nutrition, you know, but it doesn't mean I won't continue to modify things 
to try to get people if I need to be, need to. I don't have a standard one size fits all advice. Right. When I think about this and the anecdotes that you can hear on, on both sides, I think about what's the overlap here? And one thing that just pops up is both diets tend to be devoid of ultra processed foods and can help people lose weight, at least in the short term. Absolutely. And it's a lot of times, um, as you know, fasting has a huge history on resolving autoimmune inflammatory conditions. And I don't even fast people right away with asthma, let's say, for example, because they're on steroids or a person with, uh, you know, on Imuran or immunosuppressive drug. It's not even safe to fast them. They may require six months of eating healthfully to slowly wean down off their medications. And then I might put them on a caloric re a fast or a caloric restricted period. So their body, like it, it restricts the hyperactivity of the immune system for the body to calm down enough to get back to normal function again. Is that a shortening of like a daily eating window or is that a more like a weekend fasting? How do you like to do that? protocol it's really very you know and don't forget i'm not recommending or utilizing sure. fasting for weight loss this is for people with autoimmune conditions or an asthmatic coming off their steroids or a lupus patient could into facilitate a, re a remission in these cases i'm traditionally fasting them approximately 10 days of just water i'm taking but i'm not doing it till their health improves enough so they can sustain that it's by that prolonged period of not eating for seven to ten days then going back to having moderate caloric restriction again it could curtail the hyperactivity of the immune system so they're not attacking their own body. And we, what we're trying to do is facilitate a remission. Is that something you do, you facilitate in person down at your retreat, or is that done uh, like remotely with patients? No, I don't usually do it remotely with patients. But I do have people who have, who have a history of Crohn's or, col or ulcerative colitis who fast two or three days a month or two or three days every six weeks as a means of maintaining remission from their um, inflammatory bowel disease. So some of these people have gotten off medications. They're no longer putting blood in their stool. They're, they're, they've improved their digestive capacity to the point. But they're still somewhat um, more susceptible to developing a flare down the road. So by may, even they're off medication, they're doing well. We sometimes have them fast regularly to have to improve their digestive capacity. 